What's going on? It's Metacosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our biology playlist. In the last video, we talked about the blood vessels. You have arteries, veins, and capillary. Now, what flows inside the vessel? Uh, blood? Yeah, and blood is made of what? Plasma and blood cells. The blood cells are divided into red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Red blood cells carry oxygen and carbon dioxide. Oxygen is given to the cell. Carbon dioxide is taken away from the cell. And then you go to the lungs to do the exact opposite. White blood cells, that's your military defense system, defending your body against invaders. Platelets or thrombocytes will help you make a thrombus. They help you clot your blood so you do not bleed a lot after injuring yourself. Your blood is made of plasma and cells. The plasma, water, and proteins. The proteins are albumin or globulin. The globulin is alpha globulin, beta globulin, or gamma globulin. Let's talk about the cells. These are the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets. Plasma constitutes 55% of your blood, but cells only 45%. Which one of these three is the most abundant and the most numerous? Red blood cells, of course. We're talking millions in every microliter. Let's start by talking about the plasma. The plasma is a relatively clear fluid. Why? Because most of it is water. Then we have some inorganic substances. These are your electrolytes, positives and negatives. Then you have organic substances such as plasma proteins, plasma lipids and others. And don't forget your gases. I'm not talking about your fart. I'm talking about the blood gases. We have oxygen which comes from the lungs and then goes to the tissue. And carbon dioxide which comes from the tissue and goes to the lung so that you can breathe it out. <sighs> Disgusting. The plasma proteins are albumin and globulin, mostly. Do we have others? Yes, we do, such as fibrinogen and prothrombin. These are coagulation factors. Remember the platelets? Yeah, the platelets would like to stop bleeding. Yeah, and coagulation factors are gonna help them after the platelets have performed their job. What's the most abundant plasma protein? Albumin. Albumin is more abundant. And you have many types of globulins. You have alpha-1, alpha-2, beta, and gamma. Don't forget these because these are your antibodies or immunoglobulins. And they are so important when it comes to immunity. And we'll talk about immunity in the next section in this biology playlist. We're done with plasma. Let's talk about cells. Blood cells, that is. We have red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. To carry oxygen and carbon dioxide. To fight foreign invaders and microorganisms. To cause clots. And to prevent blood loss. Hashtag hemostasis. Hemostasis is not the same as homeostasis. Let's talk about the blood cells. Where do they come from? From pluripotent stem cells. Where's that? In the bone marrow. So, all of my blood cells come from the bone marrow? That's true. Your red blood cells come from the bone marrow. Your platelets come from the bone marrow. Your white blood cells also come from the bone marrow. Pluripotent stem cells. These stem cells are two types. Myeloid and lymphoid. Everything is myeloid except lymphocytes. Lymphocytes, lymphoid. Anything else? Myeloid. How about red blood cells? Myeloid. How about platelets? Myeloid. How about monocytes, neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils? All of these are white blood cells and they are myeloid. The only white blood cells that are not myeloid are lymphocytes. They are lymphoid. So the red blood cells are here. They are called erythrocytes. The word erythro means red and cyte means cells. They come from erythroblasts. A blast is a big immature cell, but a cyte is a small mature cell. Then we have your platelets, also known as thrombocytes. They come from megakaryocytes, which come from megakaryoblasts. All of the others are white blood cells. Some of them have granules in the cytoplasm. We call them granulocytes. The others do not have granules. We call them non-granulocytes. Who are the granulocytes, Medicosis? Neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils. The acronym is BEN. Basophils, 
eosinophils, neutrophils. Who are the non-granulocytes? Monocytes and lymphocytes. Monocytes come from monoblasts, lymphocytes come from lymphoblasts. Let's talk about your red blood cells, the most numerous and the most abundant cells in your blood. You have to memorize these three words. Red blood cells are circular, like this, biconcave, like this, non-nucleated, they do not have a nucleus. They have a central pallor, in their center they are pale, like this. If you look at them from above, they are like a circle. But if you look at them sideways, like in a side view, they are biconcave like this. Why biconcave medicosis? Because this will increase the surface area, right? Which increases the area available for gas exchange. Oxygen is given to the cell. Carbon dioxide is taken from the cell. The opposite will happen in your lungs. This biconcave shape gives the red blood cell flexibility so that it can squeeze herself through small fenestrations in the capillary endothelium. This also allows the red blood cell not to burst easily if you put them in hypotonic fluid. Hypotonic fluid is a fluid that has osmolality lower than the plasma. So let's put this lovely red blood cell in a fluid that has osmolality lower than the plasma. In this situation, the red blood cell itself has a higher osmolality than this hypotonic fluid. Correct. Therefore, water is going to flow towards the high osmolality. Okay, this is called osmosis. And the red blood cell will swell. But thanks to the biconcave shape, it will not explode. But imagine that your red blood cell was not biconcave. Well, then, with the first drop of hypotonic fluid added to the blood, your red blood cells will rupture and burst. Pew! Hashtag hemolysis. Red blood cell count is higher in neonates, athletes, and highlanders, because if you go upstairs, there is less pressure and therefore less oxygen partial pressure, which can lead to hypoxia. So as a response your body will make more red blood cells. Who makes the red blood cells? The bone marrow stem cells. Who gets rid of them after their life cycle is over? The splenic macrophages. Red blood cells contain hemoglobin, which is a globin, one of the proteins. Hemoglobin is made of, guess what? Heme and globin. The globin is just a bunch of amino acids. Heme is iron and protoporphyrin lumped together. That's why if I have iron deficiency, I can get what? Anemia. The red blood cell has a membrane and a cytoplasm. Does it have a nucleus? No. No nucleus, no mitochondria, therefore no TCA cycle, and no electron transport chain, therefore no oxidative phosphorylation for you, red blood cell. Also no ribosome. The red blood cell contains a protein known as hemoglobin, which is made of heme and globin. The heme is made of iron and protoporphyrin. What's the job of the hemoglobin? It's like a taxi cab. It carries four passenger, four oxygen molecules. In previous videos, we talked about the cardiovascular system. Remember, the left ventricle is going to give oxygenated blood to all of your cells. You go arteries, arterioles, and then capillaries. These capillaries will give oxygen to the cells, and the cells will dump carbon dioxide. But who carried the oxygen in the blood? The hemoglobin of the red blood cell. Who carried the carbon dioxide while in the blood? The hemoglobin of the red blood cell. Now it's time to talk about the white blood cells. Unlike your red blood cells, the white blood cells actually have a nucleus. And of course, we have granulocytes with granules in the cytoplasm and non granulocytes. The granulocytes are these, the non granulocytes are these two. Granulocytes are Ben, basophils, eosinophils, neutrophils. The non granulocytes are lymphocytes and monocytes. Here are your white blood cells. 60% of the white blood cells are neutrophils. So neutrophils are the most abundant, followed by lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and last is basophils. Functions of white blood cells. The neutrophils fight bacteria. They are the ones that cause acute inflammation. They are the cells that secrete pus. That's why we call them pus cells. They have another name known as polymorph nuclear leukocytes because the nucleus has different shapes. By the way, polymorphonuclear leukocytes is not just the neutrophils, 
but since the neutrophil is the most abundant, just the two words have become synonymous. Lymphocytes are fighting viruses and fungi. They are the cells of chronic inflammation and they are the cells that make a granuloma. Monocytes are the same as macrophages. When they are in the blood, we call them monocytes. When they are inside tissue, we call them macrophages. What's the function of either? Phagocytosis. They eat bacteria. Eosinophils fight parasites. Eosinophils are responsible for allergic reactions, and anaphylaxis. Basophils secrete histamine, which is also allergy and type 1 hypersensitivity. Asthma patients, for example, have tons of histamine. Basophil and mast cells are synonymous. The only difference is basophils are in the blood, mast cells are in the tissue. Monocytes, macrophages, histiocytes, kupfer cell, microglia, all of these are synonymous. The difference is the location. Monocytes are in the blood, macrophages or histiocytes are in the tissue because histology is the science of studying tissue. Histo means tissue. Kupfer cell are in the liver. Microglia are in the nervous system. They are one of the neuroglial cells, if you remember my previous lectures. Neutrophils are the cells of acute inflammation. Lymphocytes are the cells of chronic inflammation. Neutrophils fight bacteria. Lymphocytes fight viruses and fungi. We have bacteria in the extracellular fluid. Oh, this bacteria is going to kill me. How do I fight bacteria? I have to get my military, especially neutrophils, because this is a bacteria. Neutrophils will leave the blood and will go to the tissue to kill that stupid bacteria. This process is known as acute inflammation. And since these are pus cells, this can cause pus formation. White blood cells are your military officers. We'll talk about immunity in the upcoming section in this playlist. But for now, I would like you to remember, just like there is no born champion, there is no born mature lymphocyte. They all start as naive and lazy and stupid. But once they recognize foreigners, they get activated, they will mature, they will remember the infection, so that if I see the same stupid bacteria again, the second response is gonna be stronger and faster. Don't mess with my lymphocytes. Remember the lymphoid stem cells in the bone marrow? Yep, they give you B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes, but just let's focus on the B lymphocytes. B lymphocytes can mature to give you memory B cells to remember and plasma cells. Plasma cells will secrete the antibodies and we have many types such as IgM, IgA, IgG, IgE, and IgD. Majid, don't forget that these antibodies are gamma globulins. We're done with red blood cells, we're done with white blood cells, let's talk about platelets. Platelets are here, they come from megakaryocytes. The white blood cell had a nucleus, the red blood cell does not have a nucleus. The platelet is not even a cell, it's a piece of a cell. What kind of cell? The mother, the megakaryocyte. The megakaryocyte is a big, huge, respected cell in the community. This big cell rupture, pew! and was dissipated and disseminated into a thousand piece. Each piece of this debris is a platelet. Platelets do not have a nucleus and therefore no ability to divide. They are just pieces of the megakaryocyte after explosion. If you had a small paper cut like this, don't worry. First your vessels will constrict, then comes the platelet. This is primary hemostasis to make platelet plug and try to stop the bleeding. And this will be followed by your coagulation factors or secondary hemostasis. All of this was discussed in great detail in my bleeding and coagulation playlist. The coagulation cascade was also discussed in my bleeding and coagulation playlist. If you like this video, you will love my renal physiology course available at medicosisperfectionalis.com. I also have a perfectionalis ultimate notebook about leukemias. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.